Hey there YouTube, this is Adam with Retro Repairs and I'm about to tackle this uh, NES top loader that I had picked up. So I've already uploaded part one of this series and as I discovered in part one, anytime I try and hook this up I get a gray screen. I've tried tapping directly into the PPU chip to try and get, or this is the PPU right here, to try and get some sort of video signal and again nothing shows up, which leads me to believe there's some sort of processing issue here. Um, so what I'm going to do is a little more troubleshooting and then eventually what's likely going to have to end up happening is I'm going to remove this PPU chip here. I'm going to solder on a, a socket and use a known working PPU chip from a front loader NES system in its place to see one by one which chip here is going to be the issue. Um, this is going to be probably a lot of work, most likely more than it's really worth, but that's why... That's why we do it, just for the fun of it. So first thing I'm going to do here, one of the uh, commenters in my first video, I'm sorry I forget your name, but they had mentioned that this right here, this is the uh, this is the crystal that provides the clock pulse to each of these processors, and suggesting that this could be the culprit. Um, I don't really have a great way of testing that, but I do have a logic probe. And what the logic probe is going to do is we connect it into the power source and it's going to touch each of these pins and it tells me whether there's a high state of voltage, low state, or a pulse. Um, without any context, that in itself doesn't really mean anything, but what I'm going to be looking for is for the pulse to activate on the clock chip. Um, what I've done here is I put a little mark just on the processor right there for where the clock pin is supposed to be. So this is telling me that the clock pulse is coming into each processor. I'm going to test the CPU and the PPU. Um, if both of those receive a clock pulse, then that tells me that this is probably not at fault. I'm not ruling it out yet, but most likely it's going to fall into one of these, either the PPU or the CPU. Um, later, I'm also going to see if I can pull any audio directly off of the CPU. That's another way to test to see if the game's actually loading. So, um, what you're going to do with a logic probe, I'm going to start right with this. Um, it gives you two alligator clips. So the red one is going to be hooked into the 5 volt and the black into the ground. So to find ground simple, you just touch it on one of the side rails and you're good. For the 5 volt, the best way to do that is right through this resistor right here. On the right side of it with the system facing you is going to pull 5 volts. So we connect this alligator clip just onto the leg of that, just like so. Um, in order for this to properly work, you have to have it plugged in, and then you have to power it on. So we're going to switch that on, and what we're going to do here is just simply touch it to, I'm going to show you how it works. So touching it to one of these, that red indicate pops up, and I believe red indicates high, high state. So it's receiving voltage um, through that. Now, without the schematics in front of me, I don't know if it's supposed to or not, but um, this one's receiving low. So the processor is probably doing something. I just don't know what. High, high, uh, pulse. So this is receiving a pulse right here. I'm just going to mark it quickly. High, high, a little bit of each. High, low, low, and a pulse. So I'm expecting to receive a pulse here through the clock chip. So that's what it is essentially a voltage pulse coming through it to make the processor work. So that tells me most likely this uh, this oscillating crystal is probably not the culprit. Just to check out the PPU as well, starting from left to right, we've got low, high, and pulse. The pulse is that uh, orange light on the side. So again, that's telling me there doesn't seem to be an issue with receiving the pulse from the crystal into the PPU. Um, just out of curiosity, trying one of these, I think these are work RAM chips here. Let's see if we get a pulse somewhere. We're getting it kind of oh, low. I 
I'm not getting any pulse on these. Oh, there's one there. Not there. Pulse. So we're getting consistent high-low across the board with a pulse in a few of them. So it is possible. Again, I'm not sure if that's what's supposed to happen on these chips. And now they're giving me low and then oh, that's a pulse and a high-low. Low, pulse with high-low, pulse, high, 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 low. So I'm not sure if that's typical for these or not, but... Um, I'm also suspecting this chip here is gonna, might be a culprit. Um, there is a fair bit of rust along the uh, legs of this. So it is possible that inside here it's all shorted out. That's why I'm getting high-low with a pulse on all of these legs. Got, yep, another high-low pulse. Now we're low, high-low, 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 high-low. Again. I'm going to have to research a little more to see if that's typical or not, but I'm not getting it out of this other... This is the uh, SRAM here, or the VRAM, so I'm not sure if that's typical or not. But I'm fairly convinced what's going to happen here is I'm going to rip out as many of these chips as possible, replace them with sockets, and pull some known working chips out of another front loader and put them in one by one to see what works. All right, so one thing I do want to try here, on the um, advice from someone who commented on my previous video, is going to be trying to replace this crystal right here, and that's this guy right there. Um, you might note that there seems to be a fair bit of corrosion on this part of the board, so by removing it, I can kind of clean it up a bit, inspect for any bad traces, and then replace it with another one that I've picked up right here. Um, Hopefully this goes rather smoothly. Desoldering this off an old board didn't uh, wasn't too difficult, so um, hopefully this cooperates with me. I'm going to show you very quickly how I'm going to go about doing it. I'm not going to film the entire process as it can take a little bit of time depending on whether this cooperates or not. But first thing I'm going to do, um, you want to double check which pins it is are that I'm going to be desoldering. So that is can be these two right there pin one and two so very first thing I want to do is just apply a little bit of new solder to this and that helps make sure that the solder runs smoothly so flow it up get that old solder flowing add a little bit of new solder so we should have a nice blob of solder And we just wipe the tip clean. So now what we're going to be doing is I'm doing this with a desoldering braid as I don't have a desoldering pump. A pump makes it way easier to actually complete this repair but uh, we're gonna have to do it with a braid. So I just heat up that solder there with the braid and try and rub it off. So the idea is that the this copper braid is going to suck up the solder as it loosens up from this joint and just get absorbed into the braid here. So if we zoom into that, uh, let's see, that one right there. So it's not completely desoldered, it's kind of hard to really pick this up on the camera. But most of the solder has been removed. We're going to do the same thing for the other one here. So that one didn't really do anything at all. That's right here, and it still has a pretty good blob of solder on it. So I'm going to keep working on these, and when I have it removed, I'm going to show you what we've got. 
All right, so we have that crystal out here. And as you can see underneath, um, there's some pretty significant corrosion on here. So I wanna give this a good clean up uh, before we try and install the other crystal. And when I flip this over, um, I mean, these things are supposed to be sealed and I guess corrosion proof and resistant, but it's an easy fix. I have a part I was able to pull off an old board. So hopefully replacing this might even just be all that we really needed to get this system working. Um, so I'm going to clean this up with some alcohol, um, give it a little bit of a scrub, and hopefully this fix will fix it. So after a bit of cleaning, that's what we got here. Um, the very top of this board here where that crystal sits, there's really nothing on it. It's just a white mark to indicate that it's supposed to go there. So this replacement, um, hopefully it just fits in nicely. Sometimes there's little bits of solder in there that you have to try and remove, which... It appears to be the case. Um, so I'm going to try and clean that out and then get that in place and show you how I solder it. Okay, so replacement crystal is sitting in place here. It's not soldered in yet. Um, what you want to do, just to make sure that it's fully sitting flush, um, I'm not sure if you can pick this up here, but it's so far, if you look at the crystal there, it's kind of sitting up off the board a bit. So there might be a small amount of solder in the leg or a kink or something that's preventing it from going in. So what I like to do to make sure it's in there, applying pressure to the top of it, I just heat up the leg at the bottom and kind of move it around, and it will eventually settle into place. There we go, I just felt it go where it needs to go. So, now it's ready to be soldered on. And this is the, really the easy part. All you do, you grab your solder, and we just heat up the leg here and apply some solder. And same thing to the other one. There we go. So we've got two nice solder blobs. You want to inspect it just to make sure that it uh, looks like it's sitting there properly, and it is. Um, so, before I do anything else, I'm going to grab my multimeter just to make sure that we're getting a solid connection. Okay, so I've got my multimeter set to continuity mode, and all I want to do here is, by touching two pins that are connected on the same um, trace, they should beep. So, for example, these two, I get a beep. This one, I get a beep. So, this is the pin right here where my red probe is that I just resoldered, and it looks like it's working properly. Now this one, also got a beep. Now the one thing I want to check out is just this trace that runs like right along here. Um, I want to make sure that in the process that didn't get damaged. So it goes to there, and it terminates here. And we still do have continuity, so that trace is good. Um, so, before I really do anything else, I think it's time to test this and see if we got any life. Okay, so we got her near the TV, and what I want to do first is test it with my known working NES. And here we immediately get Super Mario Duck Hunt. So we know that the inputs are correct, the TV's tuned to the right channel, the game works, everything like that. So now, what we're going to do is, using the same game, I'm going to hook up the same hookups to this top loader. Um, making sure that you check the switch on the back that it is on channel 3 which this one is add some power and it'd be really nice if this worked so power on and we still get the exact same gray screen so fortunately replacing the crystal had absolutely no effect so um, the troubleshooting continues I guess and again wiggling it doesn't affect the uh, screen on the TV even a little bit. So we've still got a dead top loader. All right, so um, that's gonna be it for the end of this part, for part two. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to get it fixed yet, but the next step that I'm gonna actually try and do here is, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, is actually gonna be to remove these chips off the board and in their place, I'm gonna put these sockets. So my the sockets have come in and all these are basically 
um, pass-throughs. So this will be mounted to the board itself. And then the chip, you can actually just push into place and it will sit in the socket. The point of it is to make it really easy to uh, swap chips back and forth. Um, it's good for troubleshooting, that type of thing. So um, ultimately what you could do with sockets and a board is if I had this as a known working board and I had an NES that came in with questionable chips, I could pull the chip out, put it into the socket on this board and test that chip to make sure that it works. Um, I'm going to basically do the same thing using some chips off of an original front loader style. So that would be kind of more like that one there. Um, the, the front loader is damaged, so I mean it's not usable right now, but the chips are the same. So we can actually take them right out, put them into this top loader and try and uh, see if just any of the chips are at fault. As we kind of determined early, I suspect that this one here is a likely culprit due to... Um, just some odd results from that logic probe when I was testing it out uh, the clock or the uh, oscillating crystal works as we are getting a clock signal and I did even replace it and it still does this still does the same thing so um, stay tuned for next video uh, I am waiting for a better desoldering iron to come in that I've ordered um, it is taking a while so I'll probably just have to go and buy another one but uh, a good desoldering iron is really gonna make removal of these chips a lot easier. As you can see, there's a lot of points to desolder and it does get uh, it does get rather tedious and difficult to do with just using the old solder wick. So hopefully those come in soon and I can create part three of this series and hopefully it's the uh, conclusion where I get this up and running properly. So thanks a lot for watching. Um, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. If you're uh, experienced in working with top loader NESs or you've dealt with uh, you know uh, or you have any comments on some of the troubleshooting that I've done and what it could mean please let me know um, I'd love to hear what you think and any insight that you might have and thanks a lot as always for watching and we'll see you next time